violence is escalating. The JDL was founded by Rabbi Meir Kahana in the 1970s. The political party that bears his name was banned in Israel after one of his followers murdered 29 Palestinians at prayer in Hebron. In the United States, an FBI terrorism report called the JDL a violent extremist organization after its leaders were indicted in a plot to bomb a mosque and assassinate a congressman. In Canada, the group operates openly from this rundown building in North Toronto. Its leader claims Kahana as his mentor. It's our land, and the only time there's going to be peace in Israel is when the Islamic world will come to terms with that reality and apologize to the Jewish people for the desecrations that they've committed over the centuries and the nerve to erect a mosque on the Temple Mount. The fact that the JDL exists in Canada isn't what's remarkable. What's remarkable is the way in which mainstream Jewish organizations have refused to seriously address their presence. Um, I'm not aware of the JDL undertaking any activities that uh, would give rise to suggestions that they were engaged in uh, things that contravene Canadian law. You have been dis described as a violent group. Well, I don't know what we have done that says we're a violent group. JDL upholds the principle of Barzell iron. Yeah, third. The need to both move to help Jews everywhere and to change the Jewish image through sacrifice and all necessary means, strength, force, and even violence. Yeah, but you got to understand what uh, violence is in the proper context. Uh, the proper context. I mean, then you might as well close down every single martial arts club because they're violent. So you're just equating yourself to a martial arts club. I'm saying, well, the concept of self-defense is uh, understood and respected. In the Canada where I grew up, the country's relationship with Israel rarely surfaced in the national conversation. Today, the volume has been turned way up. Leading politicians seem sometimes to be competing to offer the strongest support to one side in the Middle East's defining conflict. And with accusations of anti-Semitism flying, politicians who are critical keep their heads down, watching from the safety of their perch on Parliament Hill, while it's people in the streets who are the ones expressing opposition to Israel's policies. And Canada's Prime Minister? He's pressing the case even further, casting support for Israel in terms reminiscent of the Bush era, an epic struggle of good versus evil. But we do know that there are those today who would choose to do evil if so permitted. Thus, we must use our freedom to confront them and their anti-Semitism at every turn. The Canadian government has what I call an ignorance-based foreign policy. This is the paradox of freedom, that awesome power, that grave responsibility to choose between good and evil. They're not interested in knowing complexities. I'm not saying they should all take my position, but they should understand the world is a complex place and they don't see it that way. You have to really start from scratch. You're starting at A, Palestinians are human, B, they're not all terrorists, and then the conversation has to begin. But when Israel, the only country in the world whose very existence is under attack, is consistently and conspicuously singled out for condemnation, I believe we are morally obligated to take a stand. You know, we're human beings, and sometimes we're going to engage in these battles, and, uh, you know, the, the rest of the world will, will decide who the winner is somewhere down the line. For them, the world is a simple place, and the simplicities are all the wrong ones. It's very, very disappointing and very dangerous.